Hi, I'm Nathan from Serious Geeks, and this video is going to be about using transports in Warhammer 40,000 9th edition. There are many facets and elements to winning games of Warhammer 40,000, be it killing the opponent, getting around the table, and holding objectives, and transports give you the capacity to do all three of these things. This edition, we'll see a resurgence of transports, which will be very critical to people's plans to hold the objectives, move around the table and deliver their units to where they need to be to cause some damage to the opponent. It's probably most appropriate to start with that latter point because it is the most obvious use of a transport. Delivering your units to the right point in the battle to actually engage in fighting the enemy is probably the most useful and obvious use of a transport that we can actually think of. Stern Guard, as an example, are rather slow moving. They only have six inches movement and they only have toughness four and a three up armor save with one wound. So they're not able to tank a lot of firepower, even with the advent of transhuman physiology that most space room players will use. Marching up the table, you can expect them to die, even with obscuring terrain, because the opponent can move into a position where they can actually get around the obscuring terrain and engage you first and do a lot of damage. A transport will assist the unit in being able to engage the opponent on its terms, at its choice of location and time. That's not to say the opponent can't counter that by attacking your transports, but then that's an element of protection. The unit will not be shot, the unit will not be assaulted because it is inside a transport. Most armies do have units that will benefit a lot from a transport in this capacity. Fire dragons, for example, really, really enjoy getting up close to a vehicle and just mounting it to pieces and they are relatively easy to kill toughness three does not a tough unit make devastators might want to jump out of the transport to get the drop on the opponent particularly if they have grav cannons and they wanted to be protected astra militarum they really do prefer to have some of their more elite units such as the tempestuous scions which is a lot of latin for this time in the morning those units are relatively squishy, but they do have access to a lot of special weapons and to get about the board and not be pushed off it with either firepower or countercharged from jump packs, etc. They're going to want to use the benefit of chimeras to get up the table. So most armies do have access to units that want transports. Chaos have chosen, for example, that are often kitted out with special weapons, all plasma or all melter. So you want to get the benefits of these units without sacrificing them on the altar of just being wiped out because the opponent sees their threat. The obvious way to protect them is to use a transport simply because whilst they're inside they can't be targeted by either shooting or assault and they also get around the table to exactly where they want to be quicker. On that note you might also want to use assault units for that very reason. The blade guard from the Indomitus block set as an example are incredibly slow but if you stick them in an impulsor, their mobility really does increase. They're able to get up the board within one turn and thus, potentially, depending on your placement, get a turn two charge. You want your assault units in close combat as quickly as possible and that is a lot easier to do if you're using a transport. And as an example that I used there, impulsors will get your blade guard right up the table as quickly as possible. A slightly different use of transports is for board control. Board control in 40k, particularly in 9th edition, is quite important because a lot of the objectives that you can score are only done so by your placement of the models outside your deployment zone around the table. This is particularly true if you want to collect those primary objective victory points, which will often mean that you'll have to be across the table or around the table to do so. And many of the secondaries are also necessitating movement around the table and controlling the board as best you can such as taking three or more table quarters to score additional victory points. As you can expect, you're going to want to score as many victory points as quickly as you can because your opponent will be trying to do the same. And it's a lot easier to win games of 40k if you've got a large lead of victory points early than it is to chase the opponent. As such, you're going to need to get across the board quite quickly to hold those objectives and using just pure infantry that only moves six a turn or equivalent you're not going to be able to do that. This is where transports come in for basic troops. It's fairly obvious that an elite or heavy unit or an assault unit will want a transport to be able to get up close or get into position to do damage to the opponent, 
it's not as obvious that you want to spend points on transports for just basic troopers that might not necessarily do much else other than hold ground, put a little bit of additional firepower on the opponent, and hold objectives. There are armies out there which will go all mechanised, in that they'll have a transport for every single unit that they have in their army, but for most of us, we'll probably have a couple of transports for our more elite or assault-based units, and we'll have, say, one or two transports for our supporting units, such as tactical squads or intercessors or Imperial Guardsmen units or other units such as that, like Dire Avengers, who might want to get across the table into the appropriate position or Chaos Space Marines in a Rhino. A lot of people don't like spending points on these units and they don't like using these units in general. I will make a video at another time where I discuss the actual tactical merits of taking basic troopers simply because of the cheaper points and the board control that you're going to have to get across the table. However, suffice to say, I believe that these units do have a place and you should invest points into them as well because you're going to need transports to get them across the table and hold that ground. In a recent game, I found one tactical squad of 10 men in a rhino alongside my other attacking elements gave my whole army a lot of support. It basically meant that I had additional weapons, additional bolters, additional numbers and bodies in a crucial area to be able to take on the frontline battle against an orc opponent who had an incredible amount of models that were just chewing through my own. But it also meant that I could use my rhino after the units inside disembarked to hold an objective and a table quarter, which meant that I could score more victory points. And let's be honest, most people are not going to shoot at a useless rhino when there are dreadnoughts, tanks, infantry, all of that, those things bearing down on them or applying pressure or killing their units or holding objectives elsewhere. Rhino is not necessarily going to be the one that's going to be targeted. So you can often hold a cheeky objective or a cheap, cheeky table quarter just based on the fact that you've got a spare transport that can go there. This is a sort of clever recycling for your units. The transport has delivered its cargo safe and sound and has suffered a few wounds in the process, so it's taken a few hits that could have elsewhere done some damage to your important damage dealing units or yourselves. What is the purpose of that Chimera now, or that Rhino? Do they just sit around and do nothing for the rest of the game, or do you just chuck them at the opponent and charge? Well, the other option is you put them back into the objective and then you can move the units that were holding the objective out further forward to do some damage to the opponent. This sort of play works for most armies, if not all. Armies comprised of heavy elite units and very small numbers will find that they're able to utilize their more damaging and effective troops in more aggressive positions because their transports are holding the objectives that the troops would otherwise have to hold. Armies that maybe are not quite as elite, such as Orcs, Astra Militarum, or perhaps even Gene Steeler Cult, will have to send in units that are going to go into a meat grinder and get wiped out, and often will find that they need their reserves to go in to continue the attack and to carry the game. How are they going to hold the objectives? Well, if they have a spare transport that can hold back and hold that objective whilst they deploy their infantry and their more damage dealing units forward to try and make up for a deficit of losses that they may have suffered. That's not to say I don't think that there is a place for transports that don't hold back and hold objectives and that go forward with your attacking units and actually engage in the opponent. Let's be honest, some of them are quite effective at doing so and very damaging themselves. Be it they have a lot of firepower or they have actual assault potential. Certainly, a transport that takes the overwatch fire of a heavy firepower unit such as aggressors can actually make or break an assault that you're trying to launch. And this was a staple tactic in 8th edition. It's obviously a lot more niche now, except for Tau. Most people can only do Overwatch once or maybe twice, depending on their army, in an entire turn, and it costs CP to do so. Come on, points. But it's definitely something to bear in mind. If you're going to charge aggressors, he's probably going to Overwatch you. If you're going to receive a lot of Overwatch from aggressors, you're going to probably want to put a Rhino in there first. Bear it in mind. So, moving on. Twin of board control is holding the objectives. When you want to hold objectives, you need models to do so, which is fairly self-explanatory. However, models die. Models are targets if they're on objectives. This is where a transport does come in very handy. If you put, say, a Rhino with five tactical marines inside the Rhino or an Impulsor 
with five intercessors on top of an objective and the opponent wants to take that objective off you but hasn't got a unit to launch an assault, they'll have to shoot you. If they're shooting you and they destroy the transport, you can disengage, get out of the transport and then you'll have five men, potentially you'll have less because they might die. In, some might die in the explosion, but you'll have some models left that can stand on the objective. You've now got two units holding that objective and you've ensured you got the victory points. This is crucial because victory points are awarded in the command phase for most games and most elements. That means that you have to hold the objective through your opponent's turn after you've moved there because your command phase comes before your movement phase. Target saturation does also assist. You might have a death strike missile launcher that is ready to launch ready to do a lot of damage on the opponent that they want to take care of. And you might also have a Chimera on objective. I can pretty much guarantee which unit the opponent is going to fire at first, particularly if the game is quite tight and both players are scoring victory points. Lastly, you're not likely to hold an objective in early turns of the game unless you can get to it quickly. Bike units, jump pack units, these can get to those places quite easily. However, sometimes you want to spread across the board to hold more objectives. You know, there might be six objectives and you might be aiming to get in four of them so that you can score the additional five points each turn. And sometimes that spreads you quite thin. This is where a transport taking a small troops choice, which is relatively cheap, across the table can really help you out. In a game where we use a finite amount of points to build our army list or power level, depending on what you're doing, it is absolutely critical you get as much use out of each unit as possible and therefore... Sometimes you have to invest in slightly cheaper units to get more of them on the board, which means you might have to use a transport for a unit that might not be as killy as, say, a Terminator Assault Squad, simply because you need to score objectives and score points to win the game. Possibly the last element to talk about would be the type of transports that each army has available. They come into generally broad categories. You have the cheap utility transport, these are often considered things like rhinos, which can basically move up the table, don't do a lot of damage to the opponent, have a reasonable amount of speed and a reasonable amount of protection for the unit inside. These units are primarily used for saving points and getting models up the table for relatively cheap cost. I would use these for troops choices and also just to get a unit up the table for as cheap amount of points as possible if I'm trying to wrangle as much out of a list as possible, particularly in a competitive setting. The next type of transport that a lot of people would use would be things like Razorbacks or Impulsors that have a lot of firepower. Impulsors are a special mention because they are particularly fast and they are particularly useful for getting transported troops up the table because of their special rules. Units can jump out of an impulsor after it's moved as opposed to before it's moved, making it a very fast unit across the table. But essentially, they are more heavily armed transport, slightly more expensive, and thus must be considered slightly different to a rhino. You're investing more points in these transports, therefore you want to get more out of them. You don't want to throw them away as often. So while you might use your rhinos to charge into opponents to stop them from shooting you or for preventing overwatch or just to get in the way of the opponent, your Razorbacks, your Impulsors, to a lesser extent your Chimeras, although they do have a lot of weapons on them, your Falcons and your Wave Serpents are very good for holding objectives. These units are very good at falling back away from the opponent after they've dropped off their cargo. They can hold table quarters and objectives respectively and can also hide behind obscuring terrain to prevent themselves from being wiped out so that they can just continue to put on a bit of firepower to support your army. Typically, these sort of transports are in a lot less numbers than their cheaper brothers, such as the Rhino, simply because they are quite expensive. An all-mechanised force can often use cheaper transports to be as a distraction because they're usually dropping off troops on the front lines, while these slightly more expensive transports can hang back and shoot. The next type of transport is probably going to be considered the heavy transport. Not every army has access to these, but the armies that do can get a lot of use out of them and have a lot of options available. Repulsors, repulsor executioners, land raiders of all type, these are typically what people think of when they think of heavy transports and they really do fit the bill. 
Orcs have use of heavy transports as well. They can build very powerful battle wagons that fulfill the same role. But of course, they have a lot more flexibility in how they kit out their battle wagons. And depending on which type they use, they might want to get up close. Typical of all heavy transports is they are very survivable. And you would usually want to use your most critical unit inside them to get them up the table, simply because of how survivable they are. Heavy transports almost invariably have a lot of firepower and a lot of weapons to use. Orcs, again, can actually have quite a cheap version of a heavy transport, but that's what orcs do. As such, most heavy transports want to get up the table and do a lot of damage to the opponent as well as disgorging their cargo as quickly as possible to actually get the benefit from them. This is because you've invested a lot of points into them and therefore you probably need to get a little bit of use out of it as best you can to try and make it worthwhile. Sadly, heavy transports are often the first thing to be targeted by the opponent because it is obvious how critical they are to your game. In 9th edition, use your target saturation you know, hold those objectives, score those points to try and dissuade the opponent from taking on your assault force and also use obscure and terrain in equal unison to try and get as much use out of your heavy transport as possible. Remember, if your heavy transport dies way before it manages to drop off your cargo or kill anything but you win the game anyway because your opponent focused so much on it, that is still a win. It might feel terrible but remember, you've won the game and it's done its job really. The last type of transport I'd consider would be the niche or specialist transport, depending on how you'd like to refer to it. Drop pods, they deploy a unit across the table as a one-off very quickly, and then for all intents and purposes are pretty much useless afterwards. These vehicles are great for getting units where you need them as you need them. However, they are quite niche and they don't give you much of a benefit after you've actually dropped off the cargo. Other specialist transports would be flying transports, units that basically are flyers and can therefore be targeted very easily by the opponent, but are incredibly fast and can zoom across the table first turn to have the unit that you want to disgorge into the enemy exactly where you need them. In 8th edition, these units fell out of favour, and they very well may not be quite as favourable in 9th edition as well, however, it does depend on how the meta does progress. Right now, Storm Ravens are very niche, and if you're going to have a Storm Raven, you're probably going to need other flyers with them so that whatever's inside doesn't just get shot off the board straight away. This is because units that are flyers, and I don't mean units with the fly keyword, but actual flyers, aeroplanes, they will get shot down because they can't hide behind obscuring terrain. And any units on the side, would just make them more of a target, particularly as a Storm Raven has so much firepower. That's not to say I don't think there is a place for Storm Ravens and the like in 40k, however, you do have to be very careful with your planning and you have to make sure that you have plenty of target saturation on the board so that the opponent can't just wipe off whatever unit he thinks is the biggest threat without having to second guess himself. Ultimately, in summary, I believe that transports are going to be a critical thing in 9th edition. I believe that their actual utility, speed and firepower, as well as the protection for the units on board, is going to be very decisive in many games, simply because the objectives and the secondary objectives are going to be very important to winning the game and you can't really score those very easily or very quickly unless you can get around the table. As such, I heartily recommend that people start to utilise transports in their armies as much as they can without sacrificing too much. Combined arms approaches do work, but also all mechanised armies will also be very powerful on the table. Anyway, that's it from me. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to promote the channel, and I'll catch you all very soon. Peace out.